Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be taking an up close look at this motherboard from Gigabyte. It features the just recently released Z68 chipset and it is the Z68X UD5 B3 motherboard and it features the LGA1155 socket which supports Intel Core i3, i5 and i7 processors. So for starters, let's go off some of the features that they are highlighting on the box. And uh, real quick, we can see the nice big logos, the Touch BIOS, uh, the new Z68 chipset, chipset uh, supports a hybrid EFI technology BIOS, uh, EFI being the new version of BIOS, uh, which allows mouse support, so you can actually point and click, uh, and also supports things like booting from larger three terabyte size hard drives, as also indicated down there. Uh, the motherboard also features a three-year warranty in the United States and Canada, as well as Gigabyte's double copper PCB, which uses twice the amount of copper for added durability. Um, down here on the bottom left, we can see that this also supports uh, another one of the unique features of the Z Z68 chipset, which is called Intel Smart Response Technology. And uh, I can't go too much in depth with this because I haven't tested it out myself, but basically what this is doing is it lets you take a mechanical hard drive like this one and a SSD like this one, uh, specifically a smaller SSD, 64 gigs or less. It lets you use the SSD as a cache drive for the hard drive. So it will monitor the data usage, it will preload data that you frequently access onto the SSD, and then when you're accessing that data, it will actually be much, much faster. And then both drives are recognized as one single drive. So. Really great feature, especially if you've been looking at SSDs, but the larger capacity ones are uh, a little bit too expensive for your taste. You can use a smaller capacity SSD and a mechanical hard drive to take advantage of that feature. Uh, moving right along, of course, we support uh, Intel Generation 2 Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. Uh, this, of course, has the Z68 chipset. Now, this little special text down here is indicating that this motherboard actually does not have uh, DVI or video outs at all. So although this is a Z68 chipset, um, bear in mind that you will need to use a discrete video card. You cannot make use of the integrated GPU on the uh, second generation Intel Core processor. Uh, moving on, for the CAPS, MOSFETs, and ferrite core, uh, and chokes I should say, they're using all high quality components uh, for added stability, durability, longevity. Uh, it has several USB 2.0 ports that have triple the amount of power uh, that generally comes with USB 2.0 ports, and that's to uh, increase compatibility as well as allow you to charge devices faster. Of course, we have USB 3.0 support as well as serial ATA revision 3.0 support. That's 6 gigabit per second. And finally, down here in the bottom right, uh, we have the sound card has a 108 decibel signal to noise ratio to support high quality Blu-ray and DVD audio playback. Uh, and then of course we are SLI and ATI Crossfire X compatible. So if you want to use uh, dual video cards, you can. Oh, and then 20 phase power, which I will show you once we get this out of the box. But you guys are probably waiting for that part of this more than anything else. So let's move along with the unboxing. And first off, let's start with accessories. This is an SLI bridge, two-way. This is a front panel USB 3.0 port. So two ports on there, which routes to a uh, USB 3.0 front panel header that you can plug into the motherboard. This goes in a three and a half inch bay, uh, otherwise known as a floppy drive size bay. So if you have that on the front of your case, you can mount that there, plug that into the motherboard, and then you have front panel USB 3.0 ports. We have four included serial ATA cables, uh, and two of these have L brackets on one end. This is our input-output shield for the back of your case. You'll notice that all of the uh, input and inputs and outputs are color-coded, so you can tell which is which. And finally, the red highlighted ones here are those special uh, triple-power USB 3. Uh, I'm sorry, USB 2.0 headers or plugs, I should say. Uh, then we have included documentation. This is a black and white multilingual manual, uh, which is a little bit more, a little bit simpler, but doesn't include lots of different languages if English isn't your first language. And then we have the full manual, which you should always keep on hand while you're building, so you know things like which DIMM slots to use and where to plug in your front panel connectors. Lots of additional information like that. This is a driver and software CD, uh, which usually it's best to head over to the Gigabyte website to download the latest versions of those. But in case you need this to, uh, you don't have an internet connection at the time, or you need to load your NIC drivers to connect to the internet, 
uh, you have that. This is just indicating that you should only use LGA 1155 CPUs. Uh, those are the Sandy Bridge CPUs, not 1156. 1156 is last year's CPU, and don't use that because it's not compatible. Also, if you do buy this motherboard and you're going with a Z68 motherboard in general, uh, it is definitely recommended that you purchase a K-series CPU because those are the unlocked ones. If you get a 2600 CPU, you will not really be able to overclock. Well, you can do a little bit, but not much. Definitely not completely unlocked. You want like a 2500K or a 2600K in order to take advantage of this motherboard's crazy amount of VRM. It's got 20 phase power and uh, all the overclocking features because this is definitely an enthusiast motherboard. All right guys, so there is a look at the full motherboard itself. It's got a nice matte black PCB. Uh, all of the connectors, PCI slots, DIMM slots, uh, motherboard power connectors, and so on are all black. Uh, the heat sinks that they've used are all sort of a, feels like it's anodized aluminum, These are, but they're a nice gunmetal gray. Got some blue highlighting on it. Actually matches the, uh, the printing on the caps on the board, which is kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. I'm sure it was maybe just coincidence, but uh, these, they have a uh, heat pipe design going up through all of the heat sinks, starting down here at the Z68 uh, chipset right there. They have an additional heat sink there and also going up all the way around to the VRM area. Uh, it's got ultra durable logo right there and then they've got a five on the side of that one, which I'm not sure how well you, yeah, you can see the five right there um, to indicate this is the UD5 version of Gigabyte's Z68X series. Uh, so now that we had a look at the motherboard in total, let's start down here. We'll start going over some of the plugs, features, and other items on the board. Uh, starting, of course, with our front panel connectors right down here in the bottom right, generally the closest area to the front of your computer. Uh, those are all color-coded inside, so you can more easily decide which of your front panels to plug into which pin headers. Next to that, I, we have a couple of USB 2.0 front panel headers uh, right over here. Uh, sorry, in between those is a three-pin uh, chassis fan header, and then here we have two USB 3.0 front panel headers, so uh, that will support four total USB 3.0 ports uh, from the front of the case. Uh, moving along over here, we have a couple more system fan three pin headers. We have a firewire header right there that's covered up by this little protective cap, which I'm just going to leave in place for now. Uh, and then next to that, we have our sound area, which is uh, usually where all of the chips and caps and everything are for the sound card. Uh, the front panel audio connector is actually up here right behind the uh, outputs for your inputs and outputs for the sound card. Uh, let's go back down here. We can actually see all of our PCI Express slots. We have two single speed PCI Express slots right there. Uh, we have three full length uh, PCI Express slots here. The top one will operate at 16 speed. Uh, second one here cannot, can operate at 16 speed, but if you have a video card plugged in, it will operate at 8 speed. Finally, the bottom one here will operate at 4 speed. Uh, in between those, we have a couple legacy standard PCI slots, and that pretty much does it for the PCI area. Let's go over here to our serial ATA ports. We have six uh, internal serial ATA ports. These are all controlled by the Z Z68 chipset. Uh, the four black ones that you see here are serial ATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second, and the two white ones you see are serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. That's uh, pretty much it for the bottom half of the board. Moving on to the top half, we have our 24-pin uh, power supply connector for most of your motherboard power. Right next to that, we have a couple little switches here. Those are just, you can just push those with your finger. One is a reset switch, one is a clear CMOS switch. Uh, there's one more uh, chassis fan header right there, three pin. There's a surface mounted power switch right there, which is very nice, especially if you're doing an outside of the box build. You can use that, which is a, a lot easier than shorting two pin headers to turn your computer on. Uh, next to that, we can see our DIMM slots for DDR3 memory. There are four. It supports 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs, and you can have up to 32 gigs total memory installed in those. Uh, moving on to the CPU area, the CPU fan 4-pin PWM header is right there up at the top. Uh, here we can see our LGA 1155 socket. Um, it is a nice chrome finish on there. Uh, make sure if you do get a motherboard, or any, any LGA motherboard for that matter, always hang on to that protective cover because you will need that in case you ever have to return the board. Also keeps those delicate pins nice and safe. 
Here we can see the VRM area, uh, the power being supplied to the CPU socket. Uh, again, we got plenty of cooling around there with the heat pipe design. And uh, this features 20, I believe it's, yes, 20 phase power delivery um, to the CPU socket. So plenty of headroom there for overclocking uh, to support lots of juice to your CPU. And oh my gosh, I almost forgot, but Mr. Lamb just reminded me, I forgot to mention the 8-pin EPS power connector that's right there. Uh, that's supplemental power for the CPU, and make sure you plug that in, and I recommend using 8-pin rather than if rather than 4-pin ATX um, if you have an older power supply. Get a newer power supply with the 8-pin EPS plug, uh, especially if you're overclocking, because you want to have that plugged in so you have the maximum amount of power available uh, for your overclocking goodness, especially with all of the VRM stuff that they have up there for overclocking with this motherboard. Let's finish off here with our input outputs at the back of the board, uh, starting over here on the left. These red USB ports you see, they're red because they are that triple power, uh, three times the power USB. So if you're charging devices or if you're using something that might need more juice, such as an external hard drive, uh, you probably want to use those slots, and there are one, two, three, four of those. Below that we have a Snyder PS2 for mouse or keyboard. Here's a couple audio outputs. We have a Toslink and a coax. Those are SPDIF compatible. Uh, here is Firewire. We have a standard Firewire and a mini Firewire port, those yellow ones there. Uh, below those, the USB 2.0 ports as mentioned. Uh, here we have a, an additional two, yes. Uh, we have two more eSATA ports. These are still serial ATA revision three. They're controlled by a Marvell 88SE9128 chip. And it looks like these are not powered. They are standard eSATA ports, uh, but those are SATA Revision 3. So you can actually have external SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second uh, devices plugged into that and not have to worry about going into your computer to get to your super high speed ports. Uh, next to that, we have four USB 3.0 ports on the back, all the blue ones here. Above that is our network interface card. This is a gigabit interf uh, uh, network interface card. Uh, running on a Realtek RTL 8111E chip. And then finally next to that is our uh, sound outputs for our integrated audio uh, using the Realtek ALC889 codec and supports up to 7.1 channel audio output. And finally, here's one last look at the bottom of the motherboard. Uh, you can get, guys can get a final look at that nice matte, back, matte black finish on the PCB. Also, all of the heat sinks on this motherboard are mounted with Phillips head spring mounted screws. So very easily easy to remove those if you decide to go with a water cooling setup. That pretty much wraps it up for the Gigabyte Z68X UD5 B3. I'm Paul with New Egg TV. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.